right, guys. Lesson 12 is going to be advanced stoichiometry, which is going to be an honors or an SAT2 challenge. So we're going to be looking at the steps for solving them. We're going to be understanding the mole conversions. We're going to be applying the mole to mole conversions and finally finding our final answer. Now, stoichiometry, again, is only used for changing moles of one substance in a chemical equation to the moles of another substance in a chemical equation. So if you want to convert moles of hydrogen to moles of oxygen, you would use a mole to mole ratio in stoichiometry. If you have forgotten, please go back to this video. It makes perfect sense on what you have to do. A mole calculation is used to convert between moles, mass, volume, and or representative particles of only one substance. So for example, if you want to go from moles of hydrogen to the mass, you would have to use the mole to mass problem found in lesson nine. You should probably go back and watch three, these three videos if they do not make sense right now. We are combining all four of these videos to do advanced stoichiometry. So the very first step you have to do, if the values are not given to you in terms of moles, the first convert you have to do is using one of the three mole calculations. So we could either take mass over the GFM to find moles, we could take the volume over 22.4 liters to find the moles, or we could take the amount of particles we have divided by Avogadro's number to figure out how many moles we have. Once you figure out how many moles you have, which comes again from these videos, you are then going to do the normal stoichiometry to change from one substance to the other substance, which again tells you in the question. Again, this is the video lesson to watch if you've forgotten how to do this. Finally, the last thing you have to do is if the problem requires mass volumes or representative particles as the outcome, then you have to change the amount of moles that you got from step two into the converted unit that you need for step three. So for most of these advanced stoichiometric calculations, you're doing at least two steps. For real, real hard advanced stoichiometric calculations, you end up doing all three. So here's an example where we're going to calculate the number of grams of ammonia, notice that it's in grams of ammonia, that are produced by the reaction of 5.4 grams of hydrogen if we have sufficient amount of nitrogen gas available. So you notice that we, we have to convert one substance into a completely different substance in this chemical reaction, which in your mind should be triggering that stoichiometric calculation. However, before we could do stoichiometry, we need moles, and we don't have them yet. So our first step is to convert 5.4 grams of hydrogen into the moles of hydrogen. So we know that in one mole of hydrogen gas, we have two grams of hydrogen gas. In the problem, though, we have 5.4 grams, which means we should have more than one mole. Cross multiply, we end up with 2.7 moles of hydrogen gas. Now that we have the moles of hydrogen gas, we can use stoichiometry to convert from hydrogen to ammonia. So that's step two. Set up that proportion that we talked about in video lesson 11, and you find that there's three moles of hydrogen for every two moles of ammonia. Now we have 2.7 moles of hydrogen. We want to find out how much ammonia we have. So if we have less than three, we're going to have less than two. So we do our proportions. We end up with 1.8 moles of ammonia. The question, however, does not ask us for moles of ammonia. So we have to still do one more step. Step three, now we use our mole calculations again to convert from moles of ammonia to just grams of ammonia. We have one mole of ammonia, which is always equal to 17.0 grams because that is, that is its GFM. And we currently have 1.8 moles of ammonia. We cross multiply and divide, we end up with 30.6 grams of ammonia. Again, notice that you first have to start with the mole calculations because we do not have moles. Then we could do the stoichiometry, which is just the mole and mole ratio. And then finally, we have to end with mole calculations because again, the question's not asking us for moles, but it's asking us for grams. This is probably the most difficult type of advanced stoichiometric calculation. And even though we went from grams to moles to moles back to grams, you could take the exact same steps and just apply the different proportions if you're looking for liters or for particles. 